conversion of planes, this time from normal representation to a parametric representation. In this case, you have to find normal vectors to the normal vector. In this, in this case, you have to find two of these. And then, actually, you already got it since one point is already given in the normal representation. And you, so you just need to calculate two vectors which are orthog orthogonal to your normal vector. Since, of course, in, in the parametric representation, you have vectors. In the normal representation, you have only one directional vector, which is normal, which is orthogonal to those two directional vectors from the parametric representation. So this may be a little bit complicated, but you'll see in the following calculation, it is not complicated. How to convert planes, this time from normal representation to a parametric representation. And I'm going to show you this type of calculation with an example which is the following. So first of all, we need some sort of plane, which is given in the normal representation. Normal representation, what does it mean? It means our plane looks something like this. So we have the x minus p. This p is some sort of support vector, and then times this n, and n is usually the normal vector. So this is the structure of a normal representation. But now we want to, we really want to calculate an example. So first of all, we, we need some uh, plane given in the normal representation. And the example is x minus 3 minus 10, 1. So this is our support vector. It's some sort of point times 42 minus 8 and minus 77 equals 0. And I'm going to call this n. This I call p. Yes, this is sort of support vector. This is the normal vector. So just to uh, give you an impression, so if this is my plane, and this should be the normal vector, then, of course, normal vector is normal to the plane, right? That's why it's called normal vector. It's like uh, <laughs> 90 degrees to the plane. And what we want to calculate now is not some sort of this representation. So point would be this point here, where the uh, this normal vector touches the plane or goes through the plane. And what we ca want to calculate now is not a vector which is 90 degrees to the plane, but a vector, that's of course how the parametric representation is defined. Two vectors actually, uh, which look like this. So the two vectors are in the plane actually. Can you imagine like this? So we have one point and two vectors which are in the plane. So not 90 degrees to the plane, not this, but in the plane, right? So all points of those uh, direction vectors are in the plane. That's the difference, and we want to calculate those those two vectors because point we already have, and the other one, the normal vector, is not not the the one we need for our parametric representation. So I'm going to show you first uh, what the parametric representation looks like. So we have some sort of support vector, which is p in this case. We can just uh, take the one from above. Then we say, okay, some sort of, uh, oops, this should be a u. So u times vector u plus v times vector v. u and v are element r. And those are vectors. Those are just plain numbers. So element r. This is called the parametric representation. And we want to go from, from this, from this one above, from the normal representation to the parametric representation. So we need, given just uh, this vector, normal vector, we want to have uh, vectors, two vectors, which are normal to the normal vector, which are 90 degrees to the normal vector, right? 90 degrees to the normal vector. So those two vectors, red and green, we want to calculate. So uh, the procedure I'm going to, sh to show you works without guessing, because I remember my, when my teacher taught me first time how to do this, 
to find normal vectors. So the normal vector, he, he told me, yeah, I should guess maybe some number, but, but and then try to, to guess a uh, product, which equals then de- uh, zero. So uh, I'm going to show you what, what he meant. So I have a normal vector times another vector. I call it W equals zero. And he told me I should just guess uh, the numbers uh, product, which equals zero. But I just like guessing especially in exams, because in exams usually <laughs> guessing doesn't work, or the methods the teacher showed you before don't work, and then you have problems in the exam, because the teacher wants you really to understand what you calculate, especially in the exam, of course, to show you that you have to think you have to work, and the teacher is always right. But this method works without guessing. So I say I have a 1 by 4 matrix. And then I further say, I, I just write it as a matrix, right? So I write 42 W1 minus 8 W2 minus 77 W3 equals 0. So I can also, I mean, if you know the method, if you have practice with, with it, you can also omit this step. Then I write 42 minus 8 minus 77, 0. So I write it as a matrix, it's a 1 by 4 matrix. So in this case, I have to introduce, because I just have one information, I but I actually need, I would need three information, three rows to calculate, uh, to at least have the chance to calculate the variables, but I don't have that. So I have to introduce parameters. I have to introduce two parameters, a param- param- parameter methods, uh, for, I, I usually do it for the third and for the second component, but it doesn't really matter. You just have to introduce two Parameters. And I say now W3 is R, W2 is T, and R and T are element R, so are just numbers, not vectors, right? And then I say, okay, then if I have uh, some sort of general solutions for W3 and W2, then I can calculate some sort of general solution for W1, which is then I said I have to put those two on the other side. So I say plus 8 and plus 77, but plus 8 the second solution, which is t plus 8 t, plus 77 the third solution, which is r, the parameter. Then I have to divide by 42 to receive the w1, right? So I have to divide by 42 to also 42, and then I end up with a solution, and this is already the solution. Now you would say, okay, this is not really, this is not really what I said, like our uh, red and green vector in the plane. But actually, it is, and I'm going to show you how you can write down the solution now. But you are, we already have the solution, right? We start with a normal vector, and now we already have the two directional vectors in the plane. And actually the procedure is quite easy. I could now just input uh, different values for r and t, and then I would end up with two vectors, but there's one step which is a little bit easier, uh, which is the following. So the, the thing I'm going to do now is just write down the information I calculated as a plane. So I have p from above, right? Th- uh, three minus 10, 1, and then, what did we say, plus, now we say plus this, this construction, which looks a little bit ugly, but it is not, in fact, so 8, 42, T, plus 77, 42, R, second solution, T, third solution, R, and this, actually, this is already the plane, and, uh, but you can write it a little bit more explicit, which is then 3 minus 10, 1. Now j- just take uh, out the t and r's, then looks the following. So I say t, 8 divided by 42, 1, 0, plus r times 77 divided by 42, 0, 1. Now that, that looks really like our, what we said before, our structure, the expression of a parametric 
representation, right? Now we have two parameters and two direction vectors and one support vector. So now you, you can make it look a little bit nicer since a vector, at least a direction vector, it doesn't, it doesn't really ma matter actually. It depends if you calculate with planes like this, then it doesn't really matter. If you calculate with some, uh, units, but this is already very advanced actually, but if, if you have something, uh, with, involved with units, then you may pay, a, have to pay attention. But in this case, it's just, we just need those vectors as directional vectors. So just the direction matters, not the amount. So you can say if this is the vector, then it doesn't really matter if it, if it, had, if it has this length or this length or also this length would be okay. This length would also be okay. So what, what we want to do is to make it look a little bit nicer is we change the length a little bit so that the expression looks a little bit nicer. So we say, 3 minus 10, 1 stays the same because it's a point we cannot change. But this we can change. We can take this vector times 42. So we say t times 8, 42, 0. And the same we do with this vector. So we just make it longer by 42. But the direction, of course, stays the same. And a direction vector with a direction vector, only the direction matters. That's why the name comes from, where the name comes from. So we have 77. Uh, 0, 42. And this is our solution. And it's, but, but you see, it's, it's not too difficult actually. You just have to, uh, keep in mind the general expression of the normal representation of the parametric representation. And another thing you have to keep in mind, if you look for a vector which is 90, or all vectors which are 90 degrees to another vector, then you have to know this is what you should keep in mind. This is what's the underlying principle. The product of those two vectors is zero, which means those two vectors are 90 degrees to each other. And then you can apply, then can actually put this rule into practice with a matrix. You don't always have to write uh, this line. You can omit, of course, if you know what you're doing, but you can also maybe write one sentence so that your teacher understands, but it depends on w whether your teacher taught you this method or, or not, or what he or she requires you to write in the exam. Always make sure that you exactly write what your teacher requires. If you're not sure in an exam, you can also, of course, ask then. Uh, but don't make it too complicated. Just Just give the teacher what he or she wants to have. And then when you have this one, then you can calculate the a general vector, which is 90 degrees to our normal vector where we started. You have to introduce two parameters and then you, you can r just write it like this. And this is already the parametric representation. Then you can just make it look a little bit nicer like this. And then you're already finished. So not too difficult. Just have to keep in mind the underlying principle, of course, Practice helps a lot. If you did this a hundred times, then you won't make any mistake in the exam. So this is how it works, and thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com.